in today's data structure class we will start our third unit searching and starting and in this class we will see in detail about sequential searching under this topic we will see the need for searching sequential searching advantages and disadvantages of sequential searching before starting our today's class we will see the overview of third unit in the third unit there are two important sections first one is searching and second one is sorting when come to searching, two important searching are there. First one is sequential searching. That is what we are going to see in today's class. And the next one is binary searching. So, these two are the searching technique. When come to sorting, insertion sorting, selection sort, bubble sort, merge sort, quick sort, keep sort, and hashing. So, these are some of the sorting techniques we are going to see in our third unit. First, let us see what is searching. Searching is a technique which is used to find the location of given target data item among the list of objects or list of data items. Okay, here the searching which is used to find the location, location of the given target data item. Okay, so from the given data item, we need to find a particular data which is available in the list or not. For example, I want to search whether 7 is available in this list or not. Okay, that is what is the position of 7? Here, the index starts from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now, the position of 7 is 4. So, that is in the fourth place, the, the target data item 7 is located. Okay, so this is called as searching. When come to searching, there are two important types. The first one is sequential searching and second one is binary searching. Sequential searching means which is used when the list is unordered. Okay, that is we can implement the sequential searching in the unsorted data items. But when come to binary search, we have to implement only in the ordered list. That is sorted data item. So, the binary search is implemented only on the sorted data item. But when compared to uh, sequential searching, it can implement on unsorted data item. First, let us see what is sequential searching. It is otherwise called as linear search. Here, it is used to find an element in the given list or not. Okay, here, the data items are arranged like a list in sequential manner in which we need to find a particular data item that is what is the position or location of the given data item okay it sequentially check each element in the list until a match is found until a match is found that is suppose i want to search seven from this list so the seven will be compared with all the data item until it reaches the 7, then it will declare the position of this 7. Okay. Otherwise, it will check the whole list until it finds the result or it will declare the number is not available. Okay. When the data items are stored in a list, okay, here the data items are stored in a list, then they have a linear or sequential relationship. Okay, based on some relationship only, the data items are stored, right? Here, each data item is stored in a position relative to others. Okay, and the relative positions are the index values. The index values of the individual data item. Here, the index starts from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, totally we have 7 data items. The index starts from 0. Okay, 0 here, 0 to 6, right? And these index values are ordered. It is possible for us to visit them in sequence manner. That means all the data items should be visited at least once. Okay, and this process gives rise to our first searching technique that is the sequential searching. For example, uh, this is the list given data item. I want to find the number 44 from this list. Okay. 
here the sequential search start at the first item in the list which is the first item 54 right and it simply moves from item to item following the underlying sequential ordering until either it finds the item or runs out of the item for example the 44 will be compared with 54 it is not 44 right then the index will be moved to 1 okay until it will compare all the data item until it finds the the target data item which is our target 44 is our target suppose i want to find 46 okay so it will compare all the data items until the end of item okay so in this list 46 is not available then it will declare the data item was not present the given data item is not present okay and now let us see one example for the sequential searching find the data item 62 in the given set of values so these are the given set of values okay from this we need to find the value 62 is present or not okay totally we have 12 data items which are the 12 data items 4 21 36 44 sorry 14 62 91 8 22 7 81 77 and 10 so these are the given data items see the index starts from 0 to 11 so total 12 items right and we need to find whether the data item 62 is present in this list or not so the sequence starts from the first index okay which is the first index here of 0 now we need to check whether the first in item is 62 or not so it is not 62 this is 4 okay then the index will get incremented okay index equal to index plus 1 and now the data value is 21 now we need to check whether 62 is 21 or not so this is not 21 then again the index will get incremented okay now the value is 36 36 is not 62 right so again it will get incremented so until it reach the 62 so the 62 is located at the index 4 okay now the result will get declared that the data item 62 is located at index a4 a means array okay in the array the fourth place 62 data item is located so this is what our result so in the same examples we will find the another number that is 72 now we need to check whether the number 72 is available in the given list or not okay now the same procedure is follows okay the index starts from 0 the value 72 is not 4 hence the index will get incremented okay likewise the index will be incremented up to 12 okay up to 12 now the value 10 is not 72 hence what happened the data item 72 is not available in the given data set okay so this is unsuccessful search in the unordered list unsuccessful search means the given data item is not available in the list of data item or data set and now let us see the algorithm for sequential search so in this function it accepts three parameters okay the first one is given set of array that is data item data items is stored in an array that is integer array and this is size of array size of array okay and this is the target value the key is target value okay and the return type is int okay it will give uh, the position of the target value right so it the return type is integer okay when come to uh, the function we need to maintain the index value isn't it so based on the index value only we can identify the position of target right so in the index while index less than size that means index uh, the index value is less than size so far the search will get continued okay if 
array of index equal to equal to key. If array of index equal to equal to key, what is the key value? That is the target value. Target value that is that it starts from zero. Then this value, the array value, will be compared with target value. Target value. Okay. If this value are mapped, that is, these two values are equal, then it will return the index. Okay. That is the position, position of the array. Otherwise, the index will get incremented. If there is no match, then the index value will get incremented. So, initially it was 0 and next, now it will be incremented by 1, that is 1. Okay. Then the same procedure will be continued until the index value will reach the size. Okay. Suppose in between the value, that is the target value is mapped with array value, then it will return the index value. It will return the index value. If there is no match, then it will return minus 1. If there is no match, then it will return minus 1. Minus 1 means what? The data item is not available in the array. Okay. And now let us see the advantages of sequential search. And this searching technique is a very basic algorithm. It consists of only one loop that travels through all the elements in the given data set or given array. And it is very easy to implement. It is suitable for small data item. Okay. If the data set is very small, then immediately we can implement the sequential searching. And the best case time complexity is order of 1. Okay. For example, if the given data item is located in the first place itself, then immediately we can reach the uh, solution, right? Hence, the best case is order of n and the worst case is, sorry, best case is order of 1 and worst case is order of n. Okay. And no additional memory space is required. It works on any structure that supports sequential access. Okay, because it is very easy. Uh, sequentially, it will compare the data item with the target value. Okay, it's suitable to handle frequently changing the data. If the data is frequently change, changing, in that uh, place also we can use this sequential searching. And this is the disadvantage of sequential searching. Okay. The very big disadvantage is it is suitable for only small data set. If the data set is very large, then we cannot use the sequential searching. Okay. It is not suitable for sorted data. If the data is sorted, suppose if the target item is located at the end, then unnecessarily it will search all the data items. Okay. So it is not suitable for sorted data. And it is not suitable for frequent searches. If the search happens very frequently, then we cannot use this sequential searching because every time it will take, uh, it will scan almost all the data items in the search, right? And the worst case time complexity is order of n. Okay, suppose if the target data is located at the end in this place, then the time complexity is order of n. Okay, and this uh, searching is not suitable for data structures which supports non-sequential access. Okay. So, these are the important drawbacks of sequential searching. And now, let us see the time complexity of uh, the sequential search. If the data item is present in the array, then the best case is order of 1, worst case is order of n, average case is n by 2. Okay. Average case means the data item is exactly located in the middle of uh, the array. When the data item is not present, then the order is order, order of n. Order of n. Okay. Because it will search all the data items and the comparison will be taken place one by one till the end of uh, the data items. Right. Hence, the worst case is that is, if the item is not present, then the time complexity is order of n. 
So far, uh, we have started our third unit, that is the sequential searching. In this class, we have seen the need for searching and uh, the algorithm for sequential searching. And we have seen some of the examples of the searching technique also. And finally, we have seen the advantages and drawback of sequential searching. In the next class, we will see the binary searching technique. Okay. Thank you.